Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is my garage shop where it is cold in North Carolina. Um, hey, I'm not going to complain. It's usually pretty, pretty nice here, but uh, um, we're going to do a bit of a departure this week, and I want to make a quick announcement. This will be the last bit video for about a month. Um, we are going out of, out of state on vacation. It's, of course, Christmas and New Year's. Immediately after the end of the year, my employer goes into a national sales meeting. We're doing that virtually. I'm involved in that in a lot of areas. So I'm not going to be available to shoot videos. So I decided what I'd like to do is to leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, we will do some turning videos in January. I, I know from when I was working at ShopSmith, a lot of people see that demonstration and they see the Mark V, Mark VII being uh, presented. And the one thing that really captures their imagination is the lathe. It's pretty cool that you can put a piece of wood in and take a finished project out. Who wouldn't like that? Um, but then a lot of folks are intimidated by it. And there's always the question of, do I have all the things I need? Am I putting them in the right place? Are they, are they supposed to be locked or unlocked? And so we're going to get into all those things when I get back in January. But one of the things I thought that I would do is to talk with you about some, some, some prep that you might do in the meantime if you want to play along. Um, and that is, let's talk about cutting tools, about lathe tools. And um, I want to make you aware of an, of an interesting deal, I think. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. Most of you probably got some shopsmith tools with your machine. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. And I am woefully ashamed of this. I ran to my shop to get these and realized that these tools that I no longer use were in a five gallon bucket and uh, had gotten moist. So that is the worst one. It actually looks better on the other side, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna show you, <laughs> gonna show you sins and all here. Uh, these are, are chisels that were made by Buck Brothers, and Buck Brothers made very similar tools for Sears. They made them with the brand name Shopsmith. They made them with Magna, with Yuba, and so on, and, and these are everywhere. So a set of these are not bad. Um, unfortunately, in today's day and age, for what they are, they're a little bit expensive because they're just carbon steel. Um, carbon steel will take a very sharp edge. You can get a super sharp edge on these, but then that edge goes away very fast. So what they are good for is they're good for getting a number of shapes into your hands that you can play with and that you can practice sharpening with. And to that point, um, let, let me show you. I got a couple of them here that over the years um, I've reground for different purposes. So for example, when my son was learning to turn, um, he was having a problem catching this part of the skew. When we turn spindles, typically uh, turning it smooth or cutting a bead, we're not using that top half of this. And if we do, it tips forward and gets caught. And so to prevent that from happening, I just ground that part away on this skew for him. Um, we were also practicing rounding over the ends here a little bit and um, in, in a much more aggressive point. Um, another skew that was reshaped, there you can see it looks like a skew, except for the fact it isn't a skew. It's a scraper produced by a skew. And I used this scraper for cutting a dovetail in the bottom of a bowl to attach it to a, a chuck. Um, here's another one that... Uh, began life as, nope, that's not the one I wanted to grab. Is it this one? Nope, that's not the one I wanted to grab. Where is it? Oh, here we go. These tools belong to my son, and we bought these from Harbor Freight, part of a probably 10-piece set that cost nothing. Um, also carbon steel. <laughs> yeah, you can see who they belong to. <laughs> And uh, these were the tools he learned on and that he practiced with. And you can see from the bottom of this one, it had a grind on it that we removed. And he was using that as a flat scraper. Um, again, no fear of damaging that because it's such an inexpensive tool. Um, so very, very inexpensive. I, I bet that that eight or 10 piece set probably cost us 15 bucks. So if you have no other tools at all, that least expensive set you could buy from Harbor Freight is not a bad deal uh, to just have something that you can play around with. 
Now you're going to outgrow that pretty quickly. Uh, it gets old because you're sharpening constantly because they don't hold an edge. And you're going to want to move up to high-speed steel. Um, my favorite high-speed steel tools are made in England, and um, I, I have them both manufactured by Robert Sorby. Um, here is an oval skew. It is that skew-shaped chisel, but the body of it has been ground into an oval. That makes it slide and rotate easier. Um, you could take any rectangular skew, and with enough time and grinding and patience, you could make it into an oval skew, but you can buy these already pre-manufactured like this. And you can see that on that, it's faint. It says Shopsmith. This one, this parting tool says Shopsmith. So yeah, Shopsmith back in the late 90s, early 2000s um, had Sorby private label some high-speed steel tools for them. You can still buy these Sorby brand tools. They're available from a number of resellers. Shopsmith, unfortunately, no longer offers these, but a couple of my favorites. I've got a one-inch skew. That's about an inch and a quarter skew, um, a, a diamond-shaped parting tool. Parting tools, by the way, are used on their edges. Every now and then, I'll catch a guy on YouTube, and they're using the parting tool like this as a scraper. And uh, while I suppose that could work, that's not what it was made to do, and we'll get into that in some detail. Um, I've also got a couple gouges from Sorby, including I actually have a set of these that I bought. I was doing some turning of not pen kits, but of perfume decanters and wanted to get some fine detail and, and bought that set. Um, I also, from England, purchased this set. This is a record set. Um, wonderful, wonderful chisels. Uh, this one happens to have a parting tool, but it's not the, uh, it's not the diamond shape. It doesn't have that raised ridge in the center. Um, a standard skew, a rectangular skew, a roughing gouge. Um, you can tell a roughing gouge because the ground pretty much flat across the top and the sides go up quite a ways. Um, a, a spindle gouge usually has the sides kind of laid out flat like that, not flat, flat, but like that. And uh, this is designed for taking a square piece of stock and turning it round. Um, and it just gets the job done quickly. And that the, the, the tip on that, because of the way it's ground, it lasts a long time. And then additionally, I have three spindle gouges in this set. And you can tell these are spindle gouges, again, by the way that that is ground. All right. And we'll get into that in January. Uh, additionally, you might be tempted to get into carbide tipped tools. Um, I've got a couple of them. This is this is one that I like. This happens to be, I think, the most expensive tool that I've purchased for the lathe, at least the most expensive cutting tool. Uh, you can see the carbide tip on that. I think I paid 115 bucks for this. It's interesting. I mean, it really it goes to town, and I'll get a uh, get a bowl roughed out very very fast. The downside to carbide is you can't get a carbide blade as sharp as high-speed steel. You can't get high-speed steel as sharp as carbon steel. However, carbon steel dulls quickly. High-speed steel dulls less quickly than carbon steel, but faster than carbide. So while a carbide uh, cutter might initially be duller than any other form of steel, it'll remain that level of sharpness for a long, 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 long time. So it does have that advantage. Um, for me, they are scraping tools, which are pretty much roughing tools. And so I'm not excited about a big set of carbide tip tools. One or two might be handy, but for the most part, that's not the way I like to turn. All right, so let's talk about this set. Um, I saw this on Amazon. It was kind of a a fluke that I came across this. And what this is, is a set manufactured in China for the company Penn State Industries. So you'll see on the label, it says PSI, that's Penn State Industries. And then you'll also see the brand Benjamin's Best. And the, uh, the tools here are high-speed steel. They are uh, marked both on the handle and, yeah, they've laser engraved inside of that HSS for high-speed steel. And then it also says the size and M 
2, which is the grade of the high-speed steel. The handles on these are some form of hardwood. They're not amazing, but they are smooth and they're, they're, they're finished well. And I find for my hand, they're just a little bit small. Um, but, you know, turning handles is a great first time project and it's a great project to teach you how to replicate a shape. So I wouldn't let that bother me at all. What's important is I want to look at these at these tools and see how they're made. Um, all turning tools or most of them, when they come to you, they're not sharp. They have a rough grind to them. You may wind up reshaping them yourself. So there's no point in them sending them to you sharp. So that means right out of the box, um, they have some work that needs to be done. That is a roughing gouge. You can see again, it's, uh, it's, it's blunt across the top. Um, it's, it's splayed out a little bit, not quite like a spindle gouge, but um, that even could be ground into a spindle gouge if you wanted to. They have brass ferrules and all of the ferrules have a dimple where they've peened the ferrule in place. That's done for the sake of time and to save money. Um, they, they could have fit the tenon to fit that uh, ferrule perfectly. The ferrule is there so that when you drive the chisel or the tang of the chisel down into the handle, it doesn't split the handle. So it does serve a purpose. Um, I have no idea how far into that handle the tang goes, but the further the better. But I'm looking to see, are these straight? Are there any obvious voids or defects? And that, that looks fine. Here's a three quarter inch spindle gouge. Let's compare those two. Again, you can see, get it against the white background. You can definitely see a difference in the way the tips are ground. And that one is maybe a little bit off of being perfectly straight. Feels good. Here's a, a half inch. I would say that's a bowl gouge, actually. The way that that is ground, that uh, gets you, the way they ground it, you could use that as a spindle gouge, but really I believe it that the way the flute is machined into this, this should be considered a bowl gouge. Let me see what they say on the front. Uh, half inch bowl gouge. Yeah, so it is a bowl gouge. Then we have a couple skews, a one inch skew. This is a rectangular body um, right off the bat. I'm gonna to have to grind or file the edges here to round them over just a little bit. Um, and really they're not terrible right now. Sometimes these edges can be so sharp, they'll dig right into your tool rest and that causes problems. The grind on that is actually really nice. Uh, I think all I have to do to that one is to, to get rid of the plastic dip that they put on that. And that's nice and straight. The uh, 5 8 inch skew maybe has a little bit of a bend. Oh, I can't bend that. Maybe just a little bit of an angle. And then there are three other tools, a total of five tools. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, a total of, there's a parting tool. That, that is 3 16 of an inch wide. That one's used on edge, as I mentioned. But there are three tools here that are basically the same steel stock. And so those three could be ground into any shape you want. I could replicate the skew, I could make scrapers. One of them is currently ground as a round nose scraper and the other one is a diamond scraper, which I never use. So that'll either remain unused or that'll get ground into some other shape. Again, those look good. So as I was uh, waiting for these to arrive, I remembered, you know what? Harbor Freight has lathe tools. I, I bought that set for my son. I wonder if they have something comparable to this. And uh, I have to admit, it kind of took my breath away when I saw this set that looked identical. I mean, it looked identical. <laughs> so I went and bought it. And uh, let's, let's take a look at this set and see what it has going for it. Also in a wooden box, nothing holding the tools in place. But that's okay, the box is kind of cruddy anyway. There you go. This is their Windsor design. 
And um, I'll be honest with you, I opened this a little bit ago and that video didn't take. So uh, all the things I'm looking at here, I'm discovering for the second time. What I noticed about these is the handles are some odd hardwood. Uh, they have a, a look of birch, I'm sorry, beech, but I don't know that that's what that is. But they're all really, really rough and dimply. So I suspect that they machine turn these and that just chatter. Um, they have very thin brass ferrules also with the dimple. And the grind on these is not great at all. Um, not that I care about how well the round nose is ground, but the round nose isn't even, uh, isn't even exactly round. That's weird. It's a weird shape. Anyway, um, got a small skew and a large skew. So just like the other set. And I don't know. I, I have trouble showing you how out of true these are. Um, I hold that against something like that. And if I hold the bottom of the handle, then it's going to make it look even worse than it really is because the bottom is a slightly, well, I don't know. But you can see a little bit of an angle there. There's a very small spindle gouge, parting tool. Yeah. That is, again, that, that diamond-shaped scraper that I have no use for. And then they have two spindle gouges in this set. And you can see, you can see that this, this one right here has quite a bend in it. In fact, it's not even centered in the handle. You can see it's off-center of the ferrule. At least I can see it's off-center of the ferrule. Yeah, okay, so what, what did this cost me? Let's go to the receipt here. Uh, regular price on this is $67.99, $67.99. Um, I paid $79 for, for the other one, so $67, so it's 10 bucks cheaper right off the bat, but I had a 20% off coupon, bringing the price down to $54.39. And on top of that, I got a free flashlight. So um, I tell you what, if the only money you have in your life is 55 bucks and you either don't have any lathe chisels or you want to step up and try high-speed steel, um, I think you're fine with this. I think you're going to find that uh, some of the weird things that, that are here, you're going to be able to live with or adjust. You might need to regrind some things on it. Um, is it worth $30 more to buy the one from Amazon? For me, it is because I don't want to waste my time grinding. I, I typically want to just get right to turning. And uh, as it is with both of these, I got to remove that polyurethane that's on them. Um, I don't know. We'll leave it at that. So when we get back in January, we're going to play around with the lathe. We'll do some spindle turning, some faceplate turning, and uh, we'll, we'll put these tools to use and uh, see what we think then. In the meantime, I got links in the video description if you're interested in the uh, Penn State version. Otherwise, go to Harbor Freight, pick up this set, and meet me back here mid-January. All right? Make it a great Christmas, a happy new year, and I'll see you in 2021.